Hey, second graders, was anyone able to find out the answer to yesterday's question of what is another way of saying 115? Well, if you found out that another way to say 115 was quarter after one, you were exactly correct and crazy. Right now, the time is 10.15. So another way to say 10.15 is a quarter after 10. Because the clock is divided into halves, but it's also divided into quarters or fourths. So right now it is one quarter after 10. Today we will continue to work on telling time to the nearest five minutes. So our learning target for today is using pictorial models of digital and analog clocks, I can tell time to the nearest five minutes. And remember, Digital clocks are clocks that have just the numbers on them, and analog clocks are clocks that have these faces on them. So as you're watching the video, pay close attention to how to tell time to the nearest five minutes. There's more at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and there is the Pie Guy. All right, this is second grade, module eight, lesson 15. And in this lesson, students are going to continue telling time to the nearest five minutes. But this time, we're going to add in AM and PM. Don't ask me what AM stands for, it stands for something. <laughs> Don't ask me what PM stands for. It also stands for something. I don't know. Uh, but we know that AM is in the morning, PM is the afternoon, and that's what our students are going to be focusing on in this lesson. So let's get started. So just a little bit of a reminder, uh, I've got that GeoGebra applet that I created. And remember, it's bit.ly slash Dwayne Clock, and the D and the C are capitalized and so the idea would be we have this uh, GeoGebra applet that helps our students you know practice telling time right now that's good that there okay and so you can either have the analog or the digital or both showing for example you could practice reading an analog clock set the clock to something and let you oh, but we want it to be to the nearest five uh, so set your clock somewhere and then look at your digital to see if the students were correct so the idea would be set the time for something some nearest five and then click to see if you're right or you could do the reverse you could hide the analog clock set the uh, digital clock and then you can say well what would the analog clock look like in which case you can set up the prediction hands and these the kids will use their fingers and they can move the hand wherever they want it to go so I'm gonna do 45 and I'm gonna say oh I don't know I guess that's my prediction and then have the students click on show clock hands and we're gonna click on that and oh look at that I was pretty darn close if I hide and show those the actual hands boy I was pretty darn close so parents and teachers gee whiz let your students have fun and let you know with telling time and this GeoGebra applet is one way to do that and so as you're doing it we do want to instill in our students that convention of a.m. versus p.m. and so decide whether the, the activity uh, would happen in the a.m. or p.m. so eating breakfast is that an a.m. or a p.m. well of course it's likely to be an a.m. although we got to admit with McDonald's now they're offering breakfast all day so some of these things might you can engage in a nice little conversation with your students parents and teachers because some of this might be kind of fun setting the table for dinner is another example in Thanksgiving some kids might be asked by their parents to set their table in the morning because dinner is going to happen at two or three uh, but anyway the idea is let your students talk about a.m. and p.m. based on these current activities 
So here it says, write the time displayed on the clock, and then choose whether the activity would happen in the a.m. or the p.m. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at that clock. And this clock really looks like it is saying it is 7 o'clock. Exactly, 7 o'clock. But if we are brushing your teeth before school, that makes this an a.m. activity, so that's 7 a.m. And if we want to, we could say, well, what about eating dessert after dinner? So the idea would be, well, we're kind of thinking about after dinner, so that's going to be a p.m. And looking at our clock, well, we see that the minute hand is at Starting at 12, you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So that's 25 minutes. And we can see that the hour hand is between the 8 and the 9. So we know that that's going to be 8 o'clock. So it's 8.25. And we know it's 8.25 p.m. because we're doing something after dinner. So parents and teachers, again, we're kind of removing the scaffolding. Now instead of reading the clock, we're going to be using our um, our empty clock here to draw in the hands. This is just like that GeoGebra applet I showed earlier. So maybe instead of doing this activity, do the GeoGebra and have fun with it and play with it. Nonetheless, uh, brushing your teeth before bedtime, 8.15. So first off, before bedtime. So that's going to make it a PM activity. And 8.15. So 8.15. Well, let's start by doing the, the minute hand. That's pretty straightforward because that's going to go here. And 8 o'clock. So let, it's going to go a little bit past the 8, not to the 9 yet. So that's 8.15. And again, recess after lunch. So the fact that it's saying after lunch makes it a p.m. activity. So 12.30 p.m. So if we want to do 12.30, well, we know going our minute hand is going to go down to the 6. Now 12, if the, if the hour is 12, so we're doing 12.30. So I just took care of the 30 part with our, our hand going here, our minute hand. Now the 12 is going to be right in between the 12 and the 1 right there. There's our hour hand. So there's our 1230. And that wraps up that slide. Last slide for this video. It says, write what you might be doing if it were a.m. or p.m. So this is where our students look at the clock and we see that the time is 6 o'clock. But what we're going to do at 6 a.m. is going to be very different than what we might be doing at 6 p.m. So let your students talk about some things that they might be doing at 6 a.m. versus things they might be doing at 6 p.m. And similarly, this clock says 4.30. What might you be doing at 4.30 a.m. versus 4.30 p.m.? And that wraps up 2nd grade module 8 lesson 15. We're telling time to the nearest 5 minutes, but really we're focusing on the meaning of AM and PM. Now that you all have seen the video, we can check out our learning target again and get started on our practice set. Our learning target for today was using pictorial models of digital and analog clocks. I can tell time to the nearest 5 minutes. And as you can see, we have both analog and digital clocks pictured below. And you can walk around your house and try to figure out if the clocks there are analog or digital. So let's get started on our practice set. Your practice set today, for the first part, you're gonna draw the hands on the clocks. I did put a few reminders in here. Remember that the hour hand is short and the minute hand is long. And also, if you look at B, which is what we're saying is time to be finishing your homework, is 555. Hmm. If the minute hand is at 55, that means it's very close to the next hour. So think about that when you're drawing the hands. For the next part, you need to write what you might be doing at this time if it were a.m. or at this time if it were p.m. 
And for the last part, you are writing what time is shown on the clock. So if you have a pencil and paper handy, use that. If not, you can answer the questions in your head. But now you can pause the video to, to complete your practice set. Okay, let's check our answers. So for drawing the hands on the clock, I forgot to circle if this was a.m. or p.m., but that's okay because I can do it now. Let's see, brushing our teeth after you wake up. Hmm, that sounds like the morning. So I would say that that is 7, 10 a.m. Would you agree? And as you can see, my shorthand is We'd see that after the seven and the long hand is on the two because I count by fives, o'clock, o five, ten for seven ten. The next part, finishing your homework, five fifty-five. Hmm, could that be five fifty-five in the morning? That sounds very, very early. I would still want to be asleep. Or five fifty-five PM. I'm gonna say it's five fifty-five PM. Now there was a special reminder with this one. So remember that when the minute gets all the way to the 55, that means the hour hand is almost to the next hour. Oh my gosh, it's so close to six, but it is not six o'clock yet. It is 5.55 Yeah. For what I might be doing if it were a.m. or p.m., hmm, let's check the time. Well, the hour hand is pointing to the seven and the minute hand is pointing to the 12, so it must be seven o'clock. So seven o'clock a.m., I am walking my dog because he is ready. And at seven o'clock p.m., if I've gotten everything done for dinner, then by that time, I should be cleaning up or having my family help me clean up. And the last question, what time does the clock show? I hope that no one got tricked by this. As you can see, just like in this one, the minute hand is on the 55. So that means it is almost to the next hour, but not yet. It is 3.55, but it looks like it is almost four o'clock, as in it will be four o'clock in five minutes. Now, a challenge for you all is to take a look at an analog clock every once in a while around your house today. And if it's 50 or 55 in the minutes, look how close that hour hand is to the next hour. Okay, great job.